Are we here? There we are. There we are. Wearing some flannel. Hey, guys, just so you know, oh, we yeah. have weird audio things happening right now. And since it's our job there to be go. authentic they about fixed things. It. They fixed it. There we go. We're back. Good deal. Hey, good morning, Cincinnati. I'm Bob Herzog. And I'm Jen Dalton. And we thank you for joining us on this Monday for Arc Cincinnati. And you saw a little clip there. Sure did. We tried our hand at glass blowing. Oh. And you're going to get to hear how you can make your own glass masterpieces this hour. And you may have looked up at the night sky, but you've probably only seen a teeny tiny fraction of what's above your head. Just ahead, our friend astronomer Dean Regas explains why dark sky parks are the perfect getaway for space lovers. But before that, here's what's brewing in the Tri-State. All right, well, summertime almost here, which means a whole lot more boats are going to be floating down the Ohio River. But some business owners in New Richmond are worried that this summer may be a bust. Yeah, so the village is not so much up a creek without a paddle, but rather on a river without a dock. And that's a real problem, though funding could be announced today for a long term solution. Skipper's River Cafe and Steamboat Marina, you know, moved upstream to Maysville. And that means the loss of the only large boat dock and fuel stop for miles. We get a lot of boat traffic. Well, we were. Um, unfortunately, we recently lost our docks um, that were attached to skippers. Um, so well, this will be our first summer with absolutely no way to get into the village at this point. So we'll see what happens. Village Council member Larry Pruse says there's a plan to create a riverfront space similar to Smale Park called Liberty Landing, though that wouldn't really take shape until 2026. In the meantime, the new Richmond Village Council is considering buying used docks from other communities. Today, we're told there will be an announcement on grant money being doled out to Appalachian counties and Claremont County is one of them. That money would go toward the Liberty Landing. But again, that's looking that's looking downstream mm. uh, to 2026. The right now, if you're one of those businesses yeah. right there in sort of the lovely riverfront that is New Richmond, lots of great little restaurants and little things like that. You can see where that would be a big, big yes. problem if you don't get that traffic coming in off the river. Yeah, so I really hope they can get that figured out. Get some get some temporary something out something. there at least through the next couple of summers until hopefully that that Liberty Landing thing safe shape. What would be great? What would if they can actually get that to happen? That'd be a great space right Absolutely. along the Richmond River. Yes. That takes time. It does take time. So yeah. hopefully people will hear about this and they'll make an effort to get there and figure yeah. out ways around. Yeah. By land, by sea, by sea, just go to New Richmond, yeah, whatever, whatever you got to do. Yeah. Well, a Cincinnati tradition and one of the best marathons in the country filled the streets for the 26th year. Around 40,000 people participated in the flying pig races over the weekend with almost 5,000 running the marathon. 5,000 runners from all over 50 states and 21 different countries made their way around Cincinnati. Ohio native Jason Saylor won the race for the second year in a row. It feels great. It's it's tough to win back to back. You always got that bullseye. It's a big redemption day for me. I ran at the Olympic trials, but I had a DNF. I did not finish. So uh, I questioned myself the last uh, 12 weeks or so, and it's uh, it's nice to, to still know that I got it. And Olivia Anger from Bellbrook, Ohio, was the first woman to cross the finish line. The Flying Pig raised more than a million dollars this year. Those funds will help more than 300 charities. All right, we're going to shout out some friends here. Our own Kyle Inskeep ran in the marathon yesterday, and we've got a picture of him where he is smiling quite broadly. There he oh, is yeah, finishing yeah, right there. there. Go, Kyle. Go. I feel like I want to cheer him on now. He's getting out. I'm telling you, over. that last little bit, too, you're like, just get me to the Look end. Sounds like, unfortunately. Is there a time ever where Kyle's where he's not, not smiling? smiling? And that's despite unbelievable pain that he is in. By the way, unfortunately, that picture's not popping up for us, but you got the video. You got the video. In his post, Kyle wrote, quote, after much thought, consideration, and prayer, <laughs> I've decided I am officially retiring from my short-lived hobby of marathon <laughs> running. But you got it done, man. You did you it, did Kyle. It. You we, did it. We are so proud of you. I That's hope right. you're okay today. Our friend Chelsea Sick ran in the half There's marathon. Look at how she she writes, How are these people smiling so much? I don't know. And she wrote... What hill? <laughs> what hill? All right. the hills. All the hills, Chelsea. Um, Our buddy Chris Wrinkle. I was going to say, Chris Wrinkle, he, he ran He ran right? as well. And he's, now, his picture, a little bit different from both of them because Chris looks like he's hurting a little bit. Yeah. Um, as, as were a lot of people yesterday. I think that heat really played a factor well, for a lot of folks and yesterday. And you mentioned the, the woman that run went won the, the, the women's division, women's division. Yeah. she just collapsed right after and she it crossed a, it was kind of a scary moment at first because they right. thought maybe something you know she really needed some oxygen or she needed some water but she was just dying. and they and, and thank goodness they have 
such amazing teams down there at that finish line, yep. really all over the course to help people if they do find themselves uh, struggling through the race. But another great, mm -hmm. great flying pig weekend. That, despite yeah. on Saturday, they had the delays and things and whatever cancel. because yeah, of the yeah. rain. I know a lot of people did some things virtually and whatnot. Yep. Uh, but boy, Sunday. Weather was great for spectators. God bless any of you who were able to grind through those last few miles as that tough. temperature warmed up. That was tough. Well, this is something many people look forward to each and every year. The butterflies are coming back to Crone Conservatory. Why what am I this? moving I like don't I don't know. know? I was like flapping, I was shifting, I was gyrating. The butterfly show opens this weekend at Crone. And this year, the theme is butterflies in space! The exhibition inspired by the butterflies of the International Space Station in 2009, who successfully adapted to a zero-gravity environment, apparently. Conservatory, conservatory says it is sure to be out of this world. We may have to ask Dean about that a little bit when I we see Dean later say, today. That'd be a good probably one. know about the butterflies on the space station. Yeah, I, I vaguely remember, you know, they do all kinds of science right. experiments up there, of course, but I don't I don't remember sort of the next step in that and them adapting to the zero gravity environments. So this is cool. one of my favorites. I love going to the and just memories with my son when he was little or he still likes it, but when they're little, and little you get the little thing they yeah, land and on. They yeah. land on that. It's so neat. Yeah. Well, we'll what, have what? more on that. Oh. This just in. Oh, what? We may be going this week. Like, oh. like us. Like oh. us going. Us going to the Bob and Jen. Us going to the butterflies. In space. At, well, actually, in, in, the, in the, the Crone Conservatory. Conservatory. But still, close enough. It'll be cool. And we're going to love it. Well, there is a growing push to get young people interested in trade jobs. And soon, teens can get hands-on experience that could translate into lifelong careers. The Boy Scouts of America is opening up this skilled trades center in Loveland. Now, according to our partners at the Cincinnati Business Courier, this is how it will work. Local businesses can sponsor work projects and classes at the center. Then young people can take those classes and get real life experience while exploring some of their options. The center hopes to uh, launch by June of next year. I think it's outstanding. We just did a story last week about how all of these career centers are just booming right now. You've got, you know, you got so many students going there who may have thought about going to a, you know, a traditional college, uh, that kind of route in the past, who see these openings and this need for trade jobs. I think it's fantastic. I, I know two people right now who are getting ready to graduate from high school and they're, they are in trade programs while they're right in now. high school. Yep. And that's what they're going to be doing. And they're going to be paid to get trained and they're going to be immediately making great salaries right out of high and school. And there will be people going, yeah. yes, yes, we will take we you will right take now, you. right now. We will hire now. you. So I think it's so smart that they're doing this stuff right. and creating these places. Well, and the, and the other neat thing about jobs like that is you you have a mentor, like you have to, like, yeah. like you go through that whole apprenticeship process. And I, and I think that teaches you not just the job itself, but how to go out and yeah. do the job and, you know, react to the customer and work with the customer and all that kind of thing. I think it's awesome. Great for the businesses, too, who are coming yeah. in that will sponsor. I mean, yep. these kids, they're going to be pulling kids right out of these trade centers and, yep. you know, and great. It's good for them to get their name out there. And I'm, scouts are already win, 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 win. They're ready to do the work. Yep. They're always ready to do the work. Sure, you could stop watching now, but let's be honest, you want to see more. So click some of those links or better yet, go ahead and tap subscribe. That way you'll catch more content from Local 12.